Right, uh, Sue Murphy, good morning to you. How are you? Hi, how are you? Good. So this is our weekly TV section where we uh, point out a shiny new thing that people can stream. We uh, recommend something that you might have missed that's really good, that's out uh, and available to get at the moment. And then Owen's going to update us on uh, wrestling with the Sopranos 20 years late, but uh, better late than never. So uh, what's the shiny new thing that we can stream at the moment? There are two shiny new things, but um, I, I wanted to quickly mention The Dig, which is coming out on Netflix tomorrow, because I think uh, the trailer and the description of this are not going to do it any service at all. Um, I saw it earlier this week, and it's the story of Basil Brown, who was an excavator. He discovered it uh, just before World War II, um, a really huge Anglo-Saxon find. Um, and that makes it sound really boring, and it is not at all. It's... Um, his relationship with the woman who owned the estate that he actually completed the excavation work on is just an amazing that like gets the main part of the film and then the background is the dig and everything that's happening around that but it's it's just it's ray fines who plays basil brown and it's carrie mulligan who plays the mrs pretty is her name she owns the estate and honestly that that description makes it sound awful and it's really right. just a lovely lovely film Maybe this is more of a representation of me than anybody else, but that description absolutely does sell it for me. I do not need to see a trailer. I'll be watching it. It sounds class. Yeah, like, I don't know. I just kind of felt like it was a, like a Discovery Channel or a National Geographic kind of thing. I was like, nobody's yeah, going to watch this. Channel. It just sounds <laughs> for you, not for everyone. Well, I feel that way about it as well. Like, when they started doing the actual dig, I was like, this is amazing. But no, it's uh, it's just a very, like, heartfelt sad film like there's a lot of stuff going on in their lives and it's she's lost her husband she lost her father lost her husband quite soon after and she's looking after her young son she gets quite sick herself and his marriage is kind of on the you know hey it's, it's not that how great, do we know what was going to happen a little bit of romance over some buried <laughs> treasure eh? but it's not it's is not he, it's quite is he not, not like not 60 years older than her yeah and it was so funny actually the first time i watched this trailer i was like there we go another young woman and a, an older man but mm -hmm. that's actually the it's very representative mm -hmm. of, of the the true story all right okay <laughs> the, the, another english comedy which is chased ultimately it's like oh remains of the day remade <laughs> for the uh, millennial generation yeah. hooray yeah it did actually feel like that a little bit but to be honest like you're we're really starved for good films at the moment they're coming out they, they just seem to be whatever is going they will put it up but this is actually very good and i just feel like people are just skip over it okay and it's not it's worth a watch okay it, watch. it's called the dig it's uh out yeah. on uh friday on netflix I, I just want to point out too that uh, you're talking to Owen. He's a man who loves those uh, late night National Geographic uh, <laughs> How Aliens Actually Built the Pyramid shows. And then obviously the ice truckers of Antarctica is like, <laughs> he's sitting there rubbing his yeah. thighs for that one that's coming out. I love that yeah, stuff. Look, it's amazing. Pe people with similar facial hair to yourself usually pop up in the ice truckers one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's popular. We are Brooklyn <laughs> Saints. <laughs> we are Brooklyn Saints is out tomorrow as well. Um, I. I haven't seen this one. I haven't been able to get a hold of a screener, but I'm an absolute sucker for the the, the sports story where it, it shows like somebody who's really against the odds and trying to do their best. Like the last chance you was very similar to this this format, and it's uh, the, a broken team of seven to thirteen year olds that are coached by the local community. And the whole idea of like a, it takes a village to raise a child, and they're really invested in in trying to give them a good start in life. And a lot of these kids. The only ways they'll get into college is through a football scholarship. So there's one particular kid who's really interested in robotics, but he knows that he's going to have to get a football scholarship to go to be able to study that. And it's it's very like in in parts of what I've seen, it's kind of sad because you're looking at that that part of the life, but it's so inspiring and hopeful. It's a little bit it, it's playing to the crowd because I think people at this stage have seen Last Chance You, and I, like the first series of Last Chance You was so good because. It was like they weren't really aware of the cameras and then the second series is like oh we know how famous this can make us so we're totally going to play up to the cameras there is an element to that to this but it's still is there an all-out brawl at the end is there what sorry an all-out brawl at the end that's what i want that's what made last time to you it was like "Ooh, this is the, this you is not for the cameras that. yeah could... it was so good like but no it's a, this is 7 to 13 year olds there's an all-out brawl at the end there's a, there's a real problem like it's so, no it's just a feel good inspiring nice documentary it's four parts it's over about three hours and 
it's just what people in the community are investing in these kids' lives, and that's actually, it's a lovely thing. Look. Can we just briefly talk about the, the three hours, four parts thing? Um, there are a lot of things on Netflix that uh, are five episodes too long or four episodes too long, and you're like, ah, come on, like, why are yeah. you making me wait? The, the Maharaji one, um, where they go to Oregon and uh, the cult takes over a lot of land. That was like five episodes too much. You're like, oh yeah. my God, this is so boring. Yeah. Like, just get on with it. And you stick with it to the end. And you go, that was just a complete waste of time. That could have been a 90 minute documentary, three episodes, three hour long episodes I would have been fine with. But it ended up like seven or eight. And it was like a mm. lot of repetition. So uh, I'm always, I always think that if this is going to be two episodes too much, no thanks. I'd rather not spend the time. There's too much good TV out there. Yeah, I, I totally agree. But I think what they have the tendency to do in Netflix is actually make it a part series or a 10 part series. And I think the fact that they've gone with the four parts just shows that they've they've really just made it exactly how it's meant to be. The guy who directed it really interested. He made a documentary a couple of years about his sis, a couple of years ago about his sister. She was on conspiracy charges for something to do with her deceased husband. And it was basically trying to get her out of prison. She served a 15 year term. And he went, it's his sister. So it's this amazing documentary. So I, I think he's he's worked as a cinematographer, he's worked as an editor. I think he's I think he knows how to make a four part without making okay. it too long, you know. Okay, so We Are Brooklyn Saints is what we're recommending. Shiny new thing. Is that out now or yeah. out this weekend? It's out tomorrow. Out tomorrow. Okay, and yeah. likewise the dig. So they're your recommendations. Uh stuff that you might not have seen, but that is available right there at the moment. Um I'm gonna talk about it's a sin which is pretty amazing, really. Like, I've seen some criticism of it from some quarters that, um, you know, it's too much of a pastiche. The, the, the characters, there's a Scottish person, there's a Welsh person, there's an English black person, and there's a woman. They're the kind of four main characters, and you can understand exactly what they did and why they did it. But essentially, it's how the AIDS crisis ripped through the gay community in England and the um, complete kind of shrug of the shoulders that they got from official England in particular and how the people who were responsible for this didn't really care. There's a, a doctor in it at one point who, when he's asked to uh, give some information, like a leaflet or some advice to a patient, so what, why do you think I would have that? Kind of, you know, you're suggesting that uh, this is somehow something to do with, with uh, me as a doctor, and I couldn't possibly be gay because obviously uh, at the time that would have been frowned upon. F absolutely phenomenal, the music is great, uh, the, the writing is tight, there's, there's almost no nonsense in it, and um, we're talking about period stuff and, and how, like, I kind of feel like if you're going to do period stuff, it should mean something. It shouldn't just be for uh, titillation and amusement. And this, I'm absolutely happy to say, is an astonishingly well uh, realized period piece. Excellent stuff. Yeah, I watched, I actually watched the first episode of it last night because a lot of people are talking about it. And I, I just thought the characters are great, like, they're really well written. That the black English character, brilliant, like that guy is amazing. Roscoe. I love the way he yeah. yeah, went into the sitting room and told his family to basically go to hell. And the, I, I don't know if it's mother or his aunt who just starts laughing at his outfit. It's just brilliant. But um, I think it's it really does have its place as well. Like we kind of forget these days that people had to live their lives like that. It's, it's an, it, uh, like so, I don't know if everybody watched the Deuce, but there's um, there's brilliant, uh, brilliant stuff in that about the AIDS crisis in New York, and this is parallel to that, and just how grim the whole thing was, like, and how. So there's, there's there are details in it that are kind of obviously um, factual things that did happen to people, uh, you know, uh, teachers who would be laughed at by their colleagues in the staff room because they were gay and that they would be taunted openly because they were gay, but they couldn't do anything about it because to admit that you were gay would have meant that you get sacked. Yeah. There's, um, there's uh, um, not a coroner, what do you call people who, uh, funeral uh, undertakers who won't take the dead, the, the people who've died of AIDS for fear of getting infected. There were crematoriums who wouldn't cremate the bodies for fear of uh, getting infected. There was another one where they would, they would only bury the people um, after after dark because they were so ashamed for it. It's just absolutely horrific. And it's not very long ago. You know, yeah. the, the story finishes in the mid 90s. But we've all kind of moved on from HIV and the AIDS crisis as this kind of thing that happened as opposed to actually, well, how, did, how do we stand idly by and watch millions of people die and stigmatize them yeah. because of fear and ignorance? So I think it raises a lot of um, very pertinent questions particularly at the moment. So it's a sin. All episodes are streaming on all four and it's, uh, it's really good stuff.
Yeah, it's also right. really funny. Sorry, it's like it's really funny in yeah. parts as well. So yeah, it's not really heavy. Like they are kind of, but it uh, the, the scene in the first episode where the older guy is teaching him how to wash. Oh my was god! So uncomfortable. I was like, please make this stop. This is awful. And I didn't know where it was going. And it, like I was literally holding the remote in front of the TV, going, I don't know where this is going. I don't want to watch it. Well, you have a fair but, idea where it's gone. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, the one that I, that I picked is uh, The Lumen Terror. I don't know if you guys have seen this. It's on Amazon Prime. Uh, it's absolutely excellent. It's probably one of my favourite series in the last few years. It was one that was on, it was released in the States in 2018, and then it went on to BBC, I think, last year. And I think a lot of people might have seen it, but it's basically the story behind what happened to the FBI and CAA in the, in the lead up to the 9-11 attacks. And basically how these counter-terrorism ter departments try to outdo each other all the time. And the two guys who head up the department is John O'Neill in the FBI, who's based on a real person. He's played by Jeff Daniels and Martin Schmidt in the CIA, who's played by Peter Sarsgaard. Um, and he's kind of like a fictionalized composite kind of character. But they absolutely hate each other. They will do anything, anything to take the other person down. And that just bleeds into the departments and the investigation afterwards and the, the appearances in front of committees is kind of done and then flashbacks all the way through it. And the last episode is just brilliant. And okay. it's just it's just the one How many season. episodes? I think it's eight. I think but it's yeah, it's eight. I'm well oh well worth your time. Really, okay. really, like it isn't trickish, a lot of complicated stuff in it, but very, very good. Watch it with the subtitles on. The uh, the Looming Tower is um the one downside on, on uh, all four is I can't get subtitles which is uh, really discombobulating at this point <laughs> but uh, The Looming Tower it's called and it's on Amazon Prime oh and a 90 second update on where you are in The Sopranos <laughs> midway through season 6 uh, we're in the midst of uh, the Vito storyline which to people who watch The Sopranos I'm sure they know what that is uh, No, literally no spoilers please on this it's one of those sometimes they have this amazing ability in The Sopranos to open up a storyline at the start of an episode and wrap it all up by the end of an episode. I genuinely thought this is what was going to happen with the DeVito storyline where he would like he would disappear for an episode or two and then they would wrap it up as they tend to wrap things up in The Sopranos, a.k.a. killing off a character in brutal fashion. But this is still going on, this storyline, so I wonder is there a big twist happening in this in the next couple of uh, episodes. I will update you next week. It's this cool, hip new show uh, coming to a HBO near you called The Sopranos. You're speeding up. You're speeding up. You've got into it now. You're like at the point where you actually feel compelled to watch this stuff. We've put pressure on yeah, him, though. He has to yeah, publicly the, declare. <laughs> well, that, that, that is it, actually. Uh, so you've got to mark my card every week. I, I can't savor this anymore. My, my ratio of actually throwing in an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm or throwing in an episode of Anthony Bourdain, Parts Unknown, that ratio has, has diminished completely where I'm just on a diet of Sopranos and Sopranos only. Anthony Bourdain, Parts Unknown, also unbelievable. Like, uh, I have, I've yet to find a dud and I'm working my way through it, so. Uh, right, anything else, Sue, that you want to talk about this week? Nope, that's it. I'll have loads more next week. <laughs> okay, uh, I really want someone else to watch The Deuce. Nobody in Ireland seems to have seen it oh. and it's really annoying, says Michael on YouTube. I've seen it. It's, it's brilliant. It's really good. Uh, we, we could do a whole David Simon week uh, here oh, if, yeah. if you wanted to. Um, I'm a big fan of Generation Kill. Couldn't get into Treme. Obviously, The Wire is nearly as good as, but not quite as good Perfect. as The Sopranos. Uh, Peter Ram says, forget about all this. Get on Married at First Sight, Australia, season six. It's the job. <laughs> oh, God, terrible. All right, no. Michael. Or uh, Peter <laughs> I'm, I'm Sorry. on board with that. 100% on board with okay, that. Okay, well, you can come back and report. That's that's your, after The Sopranos is over, you can do a full week of Married at First Sight, Australia, season six. But that's addictive TV. Like, if you yeah. start watching that, you'll never be able to stop. Like, it's like Love Island. Once my, you're invested. My kids have got into uh, Ireland's fittest family. It's oh, like, yeah, but it's how so did this, good. It's so addictive. How did this happen? What? What? It's not, what where did I fail as a parent? Right, that's this week's uh, stuff that you should be watching on TV. Sue's obviously watched some stuff that you haven't seen just yet, and every week will come with recommendations. But we're also going to double back on stuff that you uh, might not have seen, but should have seen, that we really think is amazing, that we will happily stand over and fight you if you don't agree with us on that one. OTBM live every morning. Thanks, Sue. Uh, from half past seven in association with Gillette. Good morning. Start with Gillette giving you the confidence to tackle the day ahead.